Have you ever been muted on a call and not realised? FaceTime can fix that now. Hey Cave people, I'm iCave Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple news, leaks and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And if I look tired it's because it's 1.15am and I've just been talking to John Prosser in the DMs. This is how we roll. But if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, do go and check out his last episode of Front Page Tech because yesterday's video might have featured in it on Twitter. But moving swiftly on to actual news, Apple has introduced at WWDC pass keys in iCloud Keychain, which they say is a way to move beyond passwords according to the name of the session that they were featured in. There's some uh, complicated stuff here, so I'm going to let Siri handle it for me because she needs something to do. Despite their prevalence, passwords inherently come with challenges that make them poorly suited to securing someone's online accounts. Learn more about the challenges passwords pose to modern security and how to move beyond them. Explore the next frontier in account security with Secure by Design, public key-based credentials that use the web authentication standard. Discover in this technology preview how Apple is approaching this standard in iOS 15 and macOS Monterey. This new feature stores a new type of credential called a passkey. In your iCloud keychain, passkeys are web auth credentials with the amazing security that the standard provides combined with the usability of being backed up, synced, and working on all of your devices. We are storing them in iCloud keychain. Just like everything else in your iCloud keychain, they're end-to-end -end encrypted, so not even Apple can read them. Your secrets are your secrets, and they're very easy to use. In most cases, it just takes a single tap or click to sign in, and they're stronger than most password plus second factor solutions out there today thanks to the combined security of WebAuth and iCloud Keychain. And because it's just a single tap to sign in, it's simultaneously easier faster and more secure than almost all common forms of authentication today. Let's add it to that chart. As I just said, it's super easy to use, usually just one tap or click to sign in. What we are releasing as part of Mac OS Monterey and iOS 15 works on all of your Apple devices. Of course, to replace passwords for everyone, this technology needs to work on all of your devices including those that don't support iCloud Keychain. That functionality is not present in macOS Monterey and iOS 15. So this is kind of a developer preview of a technology that's coming, as it, as it said. Not everything is available just yet, but it is a really interesting thing where they're going to kind of use hardware verification to make sure that your devices stay secure and uh, your online presence stays secure as well. I think it's a really interesting uh, move towards the future. It's not quite ready yet, as Apple themselves have said. But let me know down in the comments if you think a password-free future is the future, because I definitely do. And also, on the first topic that we mentioned on this show, if you've ever muted yourself in a FaceTime call or a Zoom call or something like that, Apple now has a, uh, a nice little notification that will pop up. If you are trying to speak and you are muted on your microphone, there will be a little notification that pops up at the bottom of your screen telling you that you are muted. Just to give you a little reminder, maybe you might want to turn that microphone back on. Uh, it's a handy little feature, but I feel like it could be very, very useful for a lot of people. A nice little quality of life add-on there from Apple. Now, the good thing about WWDC is there's always these little things that come out during the week um, with little additions that can happen, like there were some unreleased watch faces earlier this week, and uh, I'm sure there will be even more coming out in the coming weeks. Now, for the first time in a little while, we have had a notification squad member because somebody read at the end of the video. It is Harry Madison. Welcome, Harry, to the notification squad. And obviously we've had quite a lot of new subscribers since we uh, did our notification squad last. So if you want a shout out in our next video, all you need to do is make sure you have uh, subscribed to the channel, rung the notification bell, and then post up hashtag notification squad down in the comments section, and uh, you'll get a shout out in the next one. And on the subject of hashtags in the comment section, if you've got a question for me, Hashtag iCave Answers, and that's what we're going to get into next, starting with Team Kinetics. iCave Answers, with the Apple events currently being online only, is it possible that Apple are planning to keep lots of events in 2021 to keep up the hype? Could Apple see the rumours and constant speculation online as good marketing as they slowly make announcement after announcement? 
And I would say that definitely all of the hype that goes on online is very good marketing for Apple. There's a reason that they are sending stuff a lot more now to YouTubers than they are sending to probably big traditional news outlets. But all of that being said, um, they've still not sent me anything. So, sad face. But yeah, absolutely, I think there could well be more events. We've already talked about the 20th of July. That's the one that um, the date has come up a couple of times in a couple of places for me. So, fingers crossed. Maybe that is real. The Metal Men of Minimula asks, I cave answers, forgetting about my heartbreak over no hardware announcements at WWDC 21 and wanting to change the subject to something else. Do you think the future of Mac gaming might be better served by cloud gaming services like GeForce Now? I definitely think that GeForce Now and the stuff like that, there's a few out there. I think Google Stadia was something that was going to be along uh, very similar lines. Basically, cloud, cloud computing where you offload all of the heavy-duty stuff to a server that's somewhere out on a server, not sitting on an actual cloud, sadly. But all of that is going on kind of in the background, and all, the, uh, all your device is doing is basically sending your control movements out to the server and then returning a video stream so essentially as long as your ping is quite short because you've got a combination of a couple of things for uh internet speed you have to have a short ping which is how long a thing takes to get from you to the other end and back again and you have the throughput basically everyone calls it bandwidth but it's actually throughput it's how much information you can get down that pipe in a certain amount of time but your throughput is basically can you fit a 1080p file down fast enough or can you fit a 4k file down fast enough or can you fit 8k down you know this is kind of what you're looking at there and can you fit down 30 frames a second or 60 or 120 all of these things kind of are what makes the file size bigger so that's what you are trying to get uh, with your what everyone calls their internet speed but the actual speed is really your ping that's how long it takes to get there and back what people are generally talking about is how much data they can get in a certain amount of time Marcinka Valchek asks I gave answers in case it was missed before which I'll be honest it was I don't know where this question has gone it's not showing up anywhere for me do you reason M1X iMacs could come before Q4 of 2021? Now, as I've said in the past, I think that Apple wants to release all of their M1X stuff in one go because I don't think they really want to hold any of it back until after M2 comes out. And M2, in my head at least, is still a November release or maybe October. November it was last year. Um, October, I think, is when they would have liked it to be if there hadn't been a pandemic in the way. So I think that it may well come in uh, Q3. Uh, which would be hopefully July, maybe August, that we actually get them shipped. But that's when I would hope we will be seeing the larger IMAX. René Poulot uh, asks, IK Vance's WWDC did not reveal any new product. Do you think some will be released this week at WWDC as a separate announcement? Now, there's a few people that have asked about this, potentially um, Apple doing kind of a press release or an extra video that they put out for the public to talk about the new products at the end of WWDC. But if they were going to do that, I'm pretty sure that they would have done some sort of pre-announcement to say, especially to the press, make sure you are ready and you are free at this time. Now, is there a possibility that that is what was said at the uh, press briefing that happened on Monday night uh, after WWDC happened itself? Apparently this press briefing did happen. This is according to John Prosser and don't see why he would make that up uh, so maybe the press do know something about an event later in the week I don't put much money on it I don't think it is likely but it's not impossible Eva H asks I cave answers hey up Dave what are your hopes and dreams about the rumored Apple display consumer version in terms of design I'd be happy if they took the 24 inch iMac knocked off the chin and gave us four Thunderbolt 3 or 4 ports with a black bezel spatial audio speakers and 1080p FaceTime camera in 24 inch 27 inch and then pulling a one more thing announcing a 32 inch version all right i'm gonna have to stop doing the voice now but that's what a up makes me think akin to the cinema hd display when it was announced back in 2004 my reasoning for doing it this way is since the announcement of the 24 inch uh, imac apple has seemed to want to lean into their legacy your thoughts on how apple may announce this i know i can see right now i'm thinking about this next question is pigs flying 
but could you see a return to target display mode? I know Apple wants AirPlay to rule, but still. So I think uh, target display mode is pretty much 100% out. The main reason I say that is because the 5K displays that they've put out in the past, uh, they could not handle getting enough uh, data over a single cable based on the cables that were available at the time, the ports that are built into it. So that's just very, very unlikely to be something uh, that they can do unless they can bring in some kind of um, upscaling that happens after it gets into the system. But then that's going to have to be running on the... No, don't think it's going to happen. Um, in terms of consumer displays, I think they are coming. I think there's only going to be one size, to be completely honest, because... In general, I think Apple has only ever done one size at a time. Um, so we will see what happens along those lines. Almost certain that there will be a consumer display because we've seen a few different sources mentioning it. But when, I don't know. I think it will be probably concurrent with the larger iMac coming out. I think it will probably be the larger iMac size. It may come out as a press release a month after that iMac because it depends on what the yields are like on the displays. If this iMac is going to use mini LED, we might not see a standalone display for quite some time until they can catch up with the yields. And Zelig Lim asks, IK have answers, when are the MacBook Pros coming? Okay, as we've mentioned on the channel before, uh, I'm hearing about a date for the 20th of July. Whether it is true or not, I don't know. It is the date that I've heard. That's all I can tell you. And that's when I think they'll do it. Because I think they want to do it as soon as possible. I think they've just been delayed by the displays. Marcin Kavalchek asks, Is it reasonable to suspect that due to the delay, stacking all the new Mac platforms will feature mini LED except mini? So I would say this is just asking, uh, because of the delays, do we think that all of the new Macs coming with their own displays will be mini LED? And to be honest, the iMac is the only one that I'm not sure on, and I think that Apple would love to put a mini LED display in that. However, I'm not sure that the panels at that size are going to have the yields that they need to in order for it to be practical. And very much I'm saying here, I don't know. Uh, I think Apple would love to. I just don't know if they've got enough to do it. So that one at least remains to be seen. I think the mini LED will come to MacBook Pro in 14 and 16 inch. I think that's just going to happen. I think that's pretty safe iMac I really don't know because I think they would have liked to put the mini LED display into the smaller iMac as well I don't know if they're going to go pure iMac Pro on the larger one or maybe they're going to do an M1X version of the larger iMac and also a 20 core version with two M1Xs inside because it does look like if they want to do a pro chip that they're going to just slap a couple of M1Xs inside or four into a Mac Pro potentially. We will see, but that would be pretty awesome. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this show, guys. Um, don't forget, today is very much the last day to get your t-shirt. If you want one, you need to buy it now. Dub Dub 21 with all the uh, emojis on it. And that's what it looks like. It's always good to click your fingers when that appears. It's important to the theme of the show um icavedave.com forward slash merch it was broken yesterday i fixed it now um i fixed it by paying for my web hosting uh, that was the way that it needed to be fixed so please go and buy some t-shirts to reimburse me for my hosting <laughs> thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one